Hi there. In this video I'll be answering a question about the motion of charges in magnetic fields and in particular the helical motion of charged particles when moving at an angle to the field. Here's a question from the 2015 revised advanced higher paper. A proton moving at constant speed v enters a uniform magnetic field of induction b as shown in figure 9a. We're then asked to explain why the proton follows a circular path. So first off let's give ourselves more space to work out the answer. So in order to work out the direction of the force experienced by a current carrying wire in a magnetic field, we can use the right hand rule, if we're defining current as the direction of electron flow that is, as we do in Scotland. This can also be used to find the direction of the force experienced by a negatively charged particle moving in a magnetic field. The thumb and first two fingers represent F, the direction of the force experienced by the wire or charged particle, B, the direction of the magnetic field from north to south, and I, the direction of the electron flow or current in the wire or direction of the negatively charged particles. Since this question is about protons, positively charged particles, we use the same system but with the left hand. Now it's important to note that the direction of the charged particles motion, the direction of the magnetic field and the direction of the force experienced by the charged particle are mutually perpendicular. In other words, at right angles to each other. Before we answer the question, here's a quick animation. Let's imagine we're looking along the magnetic field lines, so the direction is into the paper as shown. A positive proton moving upwards in the field would experience a force to the left. This would have the effect of changing both its direction and therefore the direction of the force exerted on it. The proton would move in a circle like so. At this point, you might want to pause the video to see if you can use the left hand rule to work out the direction of the force experienced by the proton. After all that, here's the answer to the question. The proton follows a circular path because a central force acts on it at right angles to its direction of motion. Now for part two of the question. Show that the radius of the path R is given by R is equal to 1.05 times 10 to the negative 8 V divided by B. The force exerted on a charged particle moving in a magnetic field can be calculated using this equation. Q is the magnitude of the charge, V is its speed, and B is magnetic induction. This provides the central force acting on the charge, which can be calculated using the equation F is equal to mv squared divided by R. M is the mass of the charged particle, and R is the radius of its path. We want to make this the subject of our equation, which we can do by rearranging like so. Since we have V squared on the top line, and V on the bottom line, we can simplify further giving us R is equal to MV divided by QB. At this point, we look to the data sheet at the front of the paper for the mass of the proton and its charge, which has the same magnitude as the charge on an electron. Substituting these values, we get this. We can then divide these two numbers, which works out to be 1.05 times 10 to the negative 8, thus giving us the required equation. This is part B of the question. Another proton moving at the same speed v enters the magnetic field at an angle theta to the magnetic field lines as shown in figure 9b. Explain the shape of the path followed by this proton in the magnetic field. So what the proton does is this. It follows what we call a helical path. The proton has a circular motion as before, but it also progresses from left to right parallel to the magnetic field. This arrow indicates the proton's velocity vector on entering the magnetic field. It has a component perpendicular at 90 degrees to the magnetic field and this component results in a central force and therefore accounts for the proton's circular motion. It also has a component parallel to the magnetic field. The proton experiences no unbalanced force in this direction, which is why it continues moving from left to right. It's the combination of these two effects that results in the proton's helical path. The next part of the question is a bit more mathematical. Here's part C. The solar wind is a stream of charged particles, mainly protons and electrons, released from the atmosphere of the Sun. Many of these particles become trapped by the magnetic field of the Earth. Some of the trapped particles move back and forth in helical paths between two magnetic mirror points. The path followed by one particular proton is shown in figure 9c. The speed of the proton remains constant at 1.2 times 10 to the power of 7 meters per second as it travels along its helical path from one magnetic mirror point to the other. Part one of the question then says, the proton oscillates between the two mirror points with a frequency of four hertz. 
Calculate the distance that the proton travels in moving from one mirror point to the other. So this is the motion of the proton. It follows a helical path from point X round to the next mirror point, then back four times per second. It's also worth noting that the radius of the helical path increases when the proton's further from the Earth. More on that later. Again, we'll need more space to work out the answer. This is an easy enough question because we just have to use the equation distance is equal to speed times time, although it might take a while to realise this is how it's calculated. We're told that the proton oscillates between the two mirror points with a frequency of 4 Hz, so the time to move from x to the next mirror point, then back, the period, can be calculated using this equation. So period is equal to 1 divided by 4 equals 0.25 seconds. Of course, the time taken for the proton to travel from x to the next mirror point will be half this value, which is 0.125 seconds. Now we can calculate distance using d is equal to vt, which is 1.2 times 10 to the power of 7 times 0.125, which equals 1.5 times 10 to the power of 6 metres. Next up, we have c part 2. Explain why the radius of the helical path followed by the proton increases as it moves from point X to point Y as shown in figure 9C. Here we can refer to the equation we saw earlier. We're told that the radius of the helical path increases and we know that the speed of the proton remains constant, so the top line of the equation must be constant. It follows then that the magnetic field strength or magnetic induction must have decreased. This should be no surprise since the distance from Earth is increasing. Finally, here's part 3 of the question. At point x, the radius of curvature of the helix for this proton is 1 times 10 to the power of 4 metres. Calculate the strength of the Earth's magnetic field at this point. Again, we're back to using this equation, although we'll rearrange it to make b the subject. Next, substitute our values of speed and radius, giving us 1.05 times 10 to the power of negative 8 times 1.2 times 10 to the power of 7, divided by 1 times 10 to the power of 4, which gives us an answer of 1.3 times 10 to the negative 5 Tesla, and also brings us to the end of our question. If you're finding these videos helpful in your studies, then please subscribe to the channel to get updates when new ones are released. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and so on, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.